So we've looked at static and dynamic compositions, and um, for that screencast we were looking at different images and advertisements, um, maybe some film. Um, I would like to now talk about symmetry and asymmetry, so these yet another kind of oppositional pair of design principles or ways of seeing a compositional space. Um, and uh, this time I want to focus on photography. So um, I'm going to be using some, some of my former student uh, works and uh, we'll start by looking at symmetry. Symmetry is really easy to understand, it's easy to read, and it's also kind of easy or maybe easier to create compositionally. I'm not saying this is an easy image to create in any way, shape, or form, but, but symmetry itself is a little easier to deal with than asymmetry because the body is symmetric. You know, typically speaking, our bodies are um, somewhat symmetric. Nature tends to be symmetric. Um, there's this, you know, even the idea of the mind-body split, sort of a, you know, a duality uh, that has a sense of symmetry to it. So when we're thinking about symmetry and we're seeing symmetry in a work of art or an image, um, what we are seeing is even weight distribution over a reflective axis. Um, in this case, the reflective axis is vertical, and um, you know this is literally it's it's a body in a um, kind of paralleled vertical space, um, and so we have um, even weight distribution over that vertical axis. Now, when I'm talking about weight distribution, I'm talking about um, how uh, how the values in the image are going to maybe give maybe darker values give more weight, lighter values are less weighty. Um, I'm also talking about size, um, how large areas will feel more weighty than smaller areas of an image. Um, and then also shape and form. In this case we have um, very kind of similar shape and form on either side of that vertical, that sort of imaginary or implied vertical line that runs straight down the middle of the image. When assessing a photograph for symmetry or asymmetry, and also just when composing a photograph in general as you go to take photographs and make photographs, um, we have to consider the rule of thirds. So I wanted to just pull up some guides here, or my fake guides, to demonstrate the rule of thirds. Um, the rule of thirds is a, just a guideline in photography um, to help people, maybe new photographers, think about the compositional space as a space that has this imaginary grid across the frame. And the imaginary grid always has, you know, it's basically it's the frame, the, the outer blue um, rectangle, you know, outlined rectangle, the frame of the image. Um, and then the uh, grid is composed or comprised of two vertical lines and two horizontal lines placed evenly. So we end up with nine individual cells, right? Three across, three across, three across. Um, and the rule of thirds basically accounts for the idea that in a photographic image we want most of the activity to happen where these um, lines intersect. Um, so this symmetric image um, sort of breaks the rule by placing the most important component of the image right in that center uh, grid. Um, generally speaking, we don't want to see the most important thing in the centered cell. Um, however, in a symmetric image, sometimes that rule of thirds can be broken. You're going to see the rule of thirds really come into play when we look at asymmetry. So another symmetric uh, photograph, a lot of times we will see portraits like this as being very symmetric. Um, and another symmetric image, yet another portrait. And another symmetric image. Um, again, we, have, we do have some sort of... Um, pieces of interest at the edges of the frame, but our primary focal point is right here in the center. We have two figures um, that are, you know, more or less evenly weighted across a vertical axis. If you have, you know, this actually is one image, it's, it's a dyad, it's, it's one overall image that's created by two separate images placed next to one another. Um, and um, in a constructed image like this, because we have that repetition of form, um, 
we will see symmetry not only in each of the single images right down uh, the middle of the frame, but also between the two frames. So let's get to asymmetry. Um, asymmetry is a little more um, difficult to understand, and it's a little more difficult, I think, maybe it's not difficult to understand, but I do think it's a little more difficult to create an asymmetric photograph. It doesn't quite feel as natural as symmetry, and so a lot of times new photographers have a harder time um, working or composing asymmetrically. Um, an asymmetric image can be balanced or imbalanced. Uh, this is something that a lot of times new students um, miss. They, they sort of think if it's symmetric, then it's even-steven, and if it's asymmetric, it's not, and one is balanced and one is not balanced, and that's not totally true. An asymmetric image can be balanced with point and counterpoint. So here, our primary focal point is the singer, and um, the singer is... Um, he's not, he almost is in the middle of the frame, but he's definitely leaning towards the left side. Um, and our secondary point of interest is the audience, right? So most of the activity in this image is happening over here. The weight of the frame is very heavy on the left side. The right side doesn't really hold much interest until we follow this line of, of wire back here. Um, to the musician in the back. So we have counterpoint back here to point in the front. And here we have asymmetry. We have more weight here, but it's balanced by the counterpoint back here. If this guy was not here, I would call this imbalanced asymmetry. Again, balanced asymmetry. Our primary focal point is here. The woman uh, washing the dishes, uh, again, mostly uh, is in, you know, she's, she's almost on that center line, but she's facing to the right. Her activity is to the right. This activity is very much on the right side. So we have most of the weight of the image on the right side of the frame. And again, we have point and counterpoint. Counterpoint back here are these two slightly out of focused subjects um, that are interacting in the background. So again, to bring up the rule of thirds grid, as we look at asymmetric photographs that are imbalanced. Imbalanced asymmetry really feels wrong. Um, you probably got it right if it doesn't feel right, is, is my general rule of thumb. So here we have an asymmetrically imbalanced image. And notice with that rule of thirds, the person, uh, the subject in the image, is almost exactly on that right line. right? And so we have um, a really kind of um, strict, uh, you know, adherence to the rule of thirds in this image. And what's happening in the center cell is almost nothing. We just have a little line of direction with her arm, um, and then the hand with the cigarette down here is pretty close to the intersection of these two, um, of these two, two lines on the rule of thirds. Another imbalanced asymmetri asymmetrical photograph. Um, here again, the, the focal point is here, completely on the right side. There's almost nothing happening in the left side of the frame, of course, except for the smoke that's sort of uh, leading us out of the frame. Um, this is very light in terms of weight. Um, now, in this case, black is our negative space. So I know that I had said that sometimes darker values can have more weight. But in this case, the black or darkest value is the negative space. The positive space is what is lit. And what is lit in this case has um, the, the dominance in terms of setting the weightiness of our asymmetric space. So most of our weight is here, and then we have a little bit here, but this is really, um, this is certainly no counterpoint to this point. Here we have an imbalanced asymmetric photograph. Lastly, I want to show an image that is um, a little bit ambiguous. It's good to see these um, you know, really well-defined um, examples of symmetry and asymmetry. And it's also nice to see sometimes an image that is a little bit ambiguous, that could be a little bit more symmetric or more asymmetric if certain conditions were met. So this, this image could be more symmetric if I just, you know, would crop it right there, right? So if I just would crop it so only the slide were in view, we'd have a, a symmetric image. But I feel like the image was leaning more towards imbalance asymmetry. Um, the problem is 
I have a couple of pieces back here, this, this um, board, you know, this advertisement board or signage, um, and then also this light back here that is um, shining some light on this house. So these, these two items, to me, um, create a little bit of counterpoint for the slide, um, but they're really not important at all to the photograph. Um, so I would say that to achieve imbalanced asymmetry in an image like this, and, and I'm not this is not um, I'm not advocating for a lot of manipulation. I'm just sort of showing how this could be a little bit better framed. Maybe is if perhaps we had some blur happening back there. So if our depth of field would be a little more shallow, and this would be the only thing in view. Uh, in focus, that would help create a little bit more of an imbalanced asymmetry. Or if that sign weren't there at all, we would get more of an imbalanced asymmetric image. So when you're trying to achieve symmetry, balanced asymmetry, or imbalanced asymmetry, you really want to be um, as clear as possible with your intention and as unambiguous as you can be.